Native speakers of English, many of them anyway, struggle to remember the spellings of words. I'm fairly good at spelling, but most weeks I double-check one or two spellings, especially for the captions on my videos where mistakes can't be fixed. For example, while preparing this video, I double-checked the word indispensable, just to make sure it was able and not ible. For non-natives or L2 speakers, it's usually the other way round. Words are encountered in writing, and the challenge, given the inconsistency of English orthography, is to guess the pronunciation. For generations, the go-to place for help has been dictionaries, those at least that indicate pronunciations. But keeping dictionaries up to date isn't easy. I'm particularly aware of this as I myself co-edit a dictionary, the free online dictionary cube where you can search both for spellings and for sounds. Pronunciations change over time in two main ways. On the one hand, the consonants and vowels of a language or accent may shift, and on the other hand, the pronunciations of individual words may change. You might say I wrote the book on how standard Southern British pronunciation has changed since the mid-20th century. The vowel system, for example, has changed drastically. However, the phonetic symbols used in most dictionaries show practically none of these changes. And many individual words are pronounced differently now compared with, say, 50 years ago. In fact, my book includes a mini-dictionary of common examples. Again, most dictionaries tend to be conservative, sometimes very conservative. Often a dictionary's first recommended pronunciation has now been overtaken by a pronunciation that's shown only as a second or third alternative, or not shown at all. Sometimes the first or only recommended pronunciation has receded or practically vanished, at least among younger speakers. Occasionally, as we'll see, dictionaries explicitly warn the reader against the pronunciation that practically everyone now uses. The Longman Pronunciation Dictionary by my teacher John Wells famously included preference polls on the pronunciation of many words, but many of the younger speakers who were polled are now old enough to have grandchildren. At Cube, we didn't write our dictionary from scratch. Our starting point was an inherited database, which we've massively revised and expanded. But we do still keep finding old-fashioned pronunciations, often pointed out to us by users who can submit comments and suggestions through the website. And when I update an entry in Cube, I don't just use my own usage or preference. For one thing, because of my age. All too often I've found out to my surprise that my own pronunciation is no longer the majority one. So I thought it would be interesting to take some words whose pronunciation has shifted, or is still shifting, and get the input of some younger pronunciation teachers. And the place I turned to is also kindly sponsoring this video. italki, as you probably know, is a highly rated platform that connects students and teachers around the world for one-on-one -on -one online language lessons. In language learning, the speaking environment is very important, and italki's customised lessons with certified teachers give students real native speaker interaction, which is great for pronunciation, as well as reading, writing, grammar, and the all-important conversation practice. If dictionaries can't be trusted 100%, a good italki teacher is an alternative up-to-date resource that you can consult italki teachers have all kinds of specialisations, like business English, IELTS preparation, etc. I had lots of pronunciation and accent specialists to choose from. Even if you're not taking specifically pronunciation-focused lessons, each lesson is going to provide masses of phonetic input from your teacher. Of course, italki isn't just for English. They offer more than 150 languages, which is pretty incredible. I almost got sidetracked from today's topic into taking lessons in Tulsa to practice my clicks. There's literally something for everyone. Lessons are available from as little as $5, and you only pay for the lessons you book. There's no subscription. If you want to start a language learning journey on italki, they've given me an exclusive promo code, JEFF5, which means if you buy $10, you get $5 for free for your first lesson. That's only for the first 50 users, though. All you have to do is click through the link in the description below. So, I took italki lessons with English teachers from the UK, the US and Australia, all a lot younger than me and I asked them to teach me their pronunciations of various words. 
My teachers were Nikki and Alex from England, American accent teacher Adrian, and Tom from Australia. Oh, italki is a fantastic platform for uh, for teaching online, whether it's English classes or, or accent teaching. It makes native speakers kind of more available to the rest of the world. We have all this modern kit, cameras, microphones, and I enjoy working online because I think it is the future. So I am happy to be able to develop my skills. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like being able to use the um, uh, people are being able to find me. And then the booking system is is simple. It's just very convenient. One of the things I, I liked about your introductory video is you made a point of saying that what, what you don't teach is traditional RP. I think it's important to learn how normal people speak, because uh, if we're talking about wanting to integrate um, and wanting to uh, be confident, it's important that we learn the current accent, not the Queen's yeah. English, as was 40 years ago. Well, what I'd like to do today is to have you teach me a little bit about uh, how you or, and people kind of in your age group um, tend to pronounce certain words. Yes, why not? Let's do it. Right, OK. OK, I would say eight. How do you pronounce that? Eight. I know a lot of people say et. I say et, and a lot of dictionaries will say, oh, the main pronunciation in British English is et. But I would say eight. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think it's I think that's the preferred pronunciation for people <laughs> younger than me. And most people yeah. are. <laughs> oh, well, I will be honest, I haven't heard too many people say et. How about this word? How do you say that? Uh, I say interest. You find Southern Brits today will tend to say interest with a strong vowel in the second syllable. Huh. Interest. Interest. When I wrote my book, English After RP, a lot of words, a lot of words that changed were ones where traditional RP had a weak vowel, schwa or i, uh, whereas younger people today have a full vowel, probably the influence of spelling or something like that. Could be, yeah. Homage? Yeah, okay. So um, can you think of any other pronunciations of that? Homage. Awesome. Yeah, homage, yeah. I think if you look yeah. in the dictionaries, quite a few dictionaries will tell you that the American pronunciation is homage. And yeah. you know, it, whereas you find, um, I mean, you pronounced it with an H as well. So homage or homage without the H, I think yeah. it has become uh, much, much more common with younger American speakers today. Garage. That word, of course, is moving in the opposite direction in Britain. So you get younger yeah. Brits and not just young Brits saying garage. So I would probably say garage. When you talk about the music, We'd say we'd refer to it as garage. I think Americans tend to try to pronounce it closer to the source language. That's something I've noticed. Yeah, I made like, a video. I made uh, a video about this. I mean, I think it's absolutely. I think yeah. it's it's a relatively relatively recent phenomenon in in both um, Britain and the states. I think it used to get a, it used it used to be massive nativization. Paris, mm. etc., garbage, etc. Um, but uh, in relatively recently. Um, I think American English has developed strategies for um, signaling that non-native vocabulary, that loan words are foreign. Sorry to be stereotypical, but let's start mm -hmm. off with this word. So I would say koala, koala. With a um, ko at the beginning. Yeah. yeah, with a ko at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Some, some Aussies weaken the first syllable, right? It's like ko Yeah, you will... You will hear koala with a schwa sound as the second sound there. I used, like I said, I used to work at zoos, so I would really enunciate koala and and really pronounce it for them. Oh, like explaining things to the visitors. And... Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can't really go full Australian on them and say, you know, get out of here, the koalas. Um, do you know the um, the YouTube channel Aussie English? Yes, it's a, it's a great channel. You can yeah. learn a lot from it. And I know yeah. he 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 teaches that word as koala. Number one is koala, koala. Now, you may notice there the O in the word koala is actually a schwa sound. So, you're going to hear uh, uh, right? That neutral vowel sound in English, koala. So, it's not koala, it's koala. So, yeah. that's what I hear from a lot of speakers. So, I think in terms yeah. of ordinary everyday Aussie speech, I think that's very common. Definitely, definitely, yeah. It, I wouldn't blink twice if someone said koala, right? That yeah. to me sounds 
Pure natural, yeah. Harass. Harass. Have you ever heard it pronounced any other way? Yes, Harris. Harris. Absolutely. When was the last yeah. time, time you heard anybody say ha harassment? <laughs> um, oh, not for a, not for a long time. <laughs> the Longman uh, Pronunciation Dictionary, the English Pronouncing Dictionary, which has been published by Cambridge for some time. Both of them firstly recommend Harris, which I think has been out of date for a long time. For a but long also, time, yeah. Both of them have a very, very explicit warning to the learner that you may irritate traditional RP speakers if you say harass. And mm. I just think that's quite hysterical, really, that's, considering that yeah. both of these dictionaries were published in the 21st century. <laughs> well, OK, so a lot of people say processes. I would say processes, but like, yes, most Americans say processes. Yeah. And I teach this to my students, actually, because I'm, I'm like, Americans say this usually, processes, although I personally will say processes because I think that's the, you know, how it should be. I have preferences. I know we're not supposed to be prescriptive, but I'm a, I have preferences, too. Oh, sure, yeah, we all do. We all do. Would you expect a dictionary to say maybe put both in to say that they're both valid? I think so, yeah, because, like, I feel like 90% of Americans say processes, maybe 80, 90%. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know whether it's that high, but it's certainly common. It's it's made possible by the weakening of the second syllable of process, right? So processes. Whereas um, in British English, you get process. It's only if it's weak, it becomes more like analyses. So oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 I think there's also biases and bias, biases. Biases, like, yeah. Yeah, they biases a lot. I would say aeon. Aeon. Okay. Aeon, yeah. Is the space between the atoms in one aeon infinite from the point of view of observers from the previous aeon? So yeah. the, the the main pronunciation that uh, that's recommended in in the Macquarie with that spelling Ian. is Ian. You know, like yeah. the name Ian. 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 And that to me is a very old fashioned. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I would say aeon, or maybe I'd hear eon, eon. But Ian, yeah. I don't think I would hear. No, that Ian one, yeah. to me is a man's name, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. When it's written without the A, uh, the Macquarie Dictionary has has the on pronunciation. Uh -huh. okay. It's spelt, spelt mm -hmm. that way. I don't think people look at that way. Yeah. Ian, I, I would think that's, that's definitely question way. that. <laughs> yeah, I would obviously, I would say cure. Ah, uh, cure. Cure, yeah, I do too. Dictionaries are all going to tell you to say cure. Cure. Yeah, cure. And that that ur vowel is very much on the endangered list. Um, mm. If you if you go to the Cambridge Dictionary online, listen to the audio. The transcription is cure, but the audio is quite clearly cure, as you say it and as I say it. Cure. 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 How many <laughs> syllables is that? Uh, I would say two. Cure. How about this one? Oh, mature. Mature. Yes, mature. When I was researching this vowel, one of the things that I found most interesting is that if you go back to the earliest pronouncing dictionary, Daniel Jones's first edition, 1917, during the First World War, hmm. there are hardly any of these words that don't have or given as an alternative. So what that says to me is that from the point of view of simplicity, there's been no need to teach this or vowel for a century because you, you could just have ignored it and said, mm. just use or because that yep. works in all the, all the common words anyway. I've seen online a phoneme chart presented jointly by the BBC and the British Council that's left or off. There's a gap there. Interesting question that I have for you, actually, because on a lot of phonetic uh, tables, it, it has the air sound as a diphthong which you could say well air you know maybe there is a diphthong but is there a case that that is changing to a more oh i would say not just changing i'd say change i mean certainly for people of your generation just changed this is a this is a vowel where my own native accent is progressive in other words people in the south of england have caught up with me because yep. my pronunciation was always uh, the the um, open mid um long open mid air um, mm. and in fact there are resources where you can find this so if you go to the latest edition of Gimson's pronunciation of English the one edited by Alan Cruttenden he's switched over to air if you do google searches on pronunciation you're likely mm. to find it there
It's also used in what used to be the Oxford Dictionary of Pronunciation, which is now published by Routledge. Mm. And of course, in my own dictionary, Cube. Mm. Uh, divisive. Yeah, but... I think that's still overwhelmingly the case. But um, yeah. President Obama was noted, you know, for, for saying divisive. When our politics feels most divisive. Whether it will become more common, I don't know. But um, yeah. yeah. Have you heard divisive? I have. I actually heard it yesterday night while watching a YouTube video, but it wasn't it wasn't a native speaker. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So that's interesting. So you've got a non-native who's picked it up yeah, from, from somewhere. Yeah. I think it's torn between on the one hand, you've got decisive, which is which is what it traditionally is. You've got divisive, decisive. But on the other hand, you've got the influence of things like permissive. Oh yeah. Uh debris. Debris, yeah. Well, debris. again, I think that is the majority pronunciation that I hear from Australians now. And yeah. If you look in my edition of the Macquarie Dictionary, same way you'll only mm. find koala, you'll also find, first of all, they recommend debris or debris. And uh -huh. debris comes up um, only third in the list, whereas I really think debris is what Australians of your age tend to say. Yeah. Definitely debris, yeah. That's the American pronunciation. Americans tend to put final stress on words from French. Um, you, you're beginning to hear it more in Britain, but I, I think it's taken over much more in Australia than it has here. Version. Yeah, that's how I say it too. Version. I think you'll find a lot of dictionaries recommending version. version. Interesting. Version with a j. Yeah. Of course, I'm pretty sure I know how you say this. Asia. Mm. Yeah, so that in old traditional RP was Asia. I think the Americans, I think American English tends to it's using is using like the um the noun form or uh, for the verb pronunciation. Yeah. It's to contrast the two things or combat the problem of homelessness or something like that. So instead of combat, so Americans I think massively say to protest. Yep. Not to protest and to yep. transport do people actually tr to transport? Oh, do people, uh, do they still do that? Mischief. Mischief. Is it pronounced any other way by Americans? Uh, no, exactly. You're hesitating. No, I think knows the answer. You get a lot of young Brits saying mischief. Mischief. Yeah. Oh, well, well. Well, no, maybe. First one you said was mischief, but you might say. I might say mischief. Yeah, Perhaps. yeah, mischief. 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 Yeah, with a chief, not a chiff, right? Yes. Not mischief. Does mischief sound old fashioned to you? In a way, yes. Mischief. What's the mm -hmm. adjective from that word? What's the adjective? Um, mischievous. Yeah. Mischievous. I think that's extremely common uh, throughout the English speaking world now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are incensed by it and say it's got to be mischievous. And uh -huh. that I shouldn't be there, etc. Yeah, but, but they want to what hold you're, on to you're doing, what I think most people of your generation do, the adjective from that is what for you? Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I was thinking about this very recently, actually. So I've been entertaining the idea of mischievous, but I have always used mischievous. And there's mischievous and. I think some of us also say mischief, mischievous, mischievous, mischievous. Yeah. Any yeah. other way you hear that pronounced? Yeah, mischievous, I hear. Yeah. Do you think that's a mistake or do you think it's legitimate? I mean, a mistake is, is, it depends on who you ask, right? What might have been a mistake before might be correct now. Like, um, I mean, I say mischievous because like it doesn't have an I, so I'm not going to say mischievous. But funny I... thing, yeah, you say it doesn't have an eye. The, the funny thing is it's been around for a long time. If you if you do an internet search, you can find so many examples in yeah. Britain, in the States, in Australia, of published mischievous with an eye. Oh, really? Yeah, huh. in print. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. I think we'll find in the, the comments to this video there are plenty of um there are plenty of uh, pronunciation police. Yeah, of an amateur kind mm -hmm. who 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 want to defend the world from the uh, horror of mischievous. Some people have decided that mm -hmm. it's a sign of um, moral turpitude. Drawing. Okay, so with with an R in the middle, yeah. Yeah, drawing. Yeah. Drawing. Drawing. drawing right. 
drawing. Well, I think people have been saying drawing for decades and decades. And I think most of the kids I was at school with said drawing too. Yeah. But um, I think the stigma is just gone. I just think it's mm -hmm. completely normal on the news today to hear people yeah. say withdrawing, withdrawal. Do you think that pronunciation drawing should be in a dictionary? Do you think it should include the pronunciation that has the R in it? I do. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. I would naturally just say drawing. It depends on what the student says. If they state without the R, I won't correct it. Um, if they say it with the R, I won't correct it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's there as an alternative pronunciation in the Macquarie. Okay. So good for them. Yeah. Good for them. <laughs> um, this one isn't about pronunciation. All I want to ask you is, do you use this word? Yes, I do. Which would you be more likely to teach to a student? Would you say it's got better or it's gotten better? It's gotten better. Uh, yeah, my brain just won't allow it's got better. It just doesn't sound right. Well, could you just think of a phrase in which you might use it? Yeah, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten a bit of a cold this weekend. Yeah. Do you know why I'm asking about this? Hmm. Well, well, you mentioned whether I use it or not, because it's possibly one that's on the way out. We might just say, I've got a cold this... No, I'm not on the way out, on the way in. No, no, this ah, is just this is fascinating. I'm... So you don't even have any feeling of this word being strange in any way. You see, I don't no. have that word at all. For me, it's completely American. I think, actually, you've got me thinking, because I remember when I was younger... I've gotten you thinking. If I... Uh, yes, I remember someone when growing up would tell me no we don't say gotten we say got but that's a dim memory now right that's so a dim memory forget forgotten get gotten it's completely irregular it has a long history it went out of <laughs> shakespeare used it and then it kind of fell out of fashion uh in i guess around about the 18th century or something in 19th century and it was only in the late 19th century that gotten came back into american english and it's only in recent decades it's quite a new thing that people like yourself are using gotten in britain now yeah trip so the question is is the first sound t as in tin or is it ch as in chin it's ch as in chin so i would say ch as in chin trip not yep. trip mm -hmm. Definitely. Let me ask you about this word as well. So, drip. Yeah. So is, is that is that D as in dog or J as in jog? As in jog. J as in jog. When I was a kid, I always wondered why it was like my name Adrian. It had a J sound in it. It was spelled with a D. And I just taught this this morning actually to a student. Yeah. Not how not, how was how was the student trip. saying it before you taught them? Trip. 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 Yeah, exactly. Even though I feel for me that it's a T and a D, I love to teach with the ch and the j because it just helps non-natives to get away from trip and drip. Yeah. yeah. So it just it works beautifully. And I think that's why it's a shame that dictionaries just have not acknowledge this fact at all even though the survey on my website which has had 10,000 responses now shows certainly for people below the age of about 40 it's overwhelmingly ch and j this is a majority pronunciation of a huge number of words in the language huge number and you know dictionaries which keep bragging to you about how many new words they've added every year oh we're so up to date oh we've got this and we've got that and we've got chat gpt and we've got goodness knows what else and um then you turn to the phonetics and it's like going into a museum the only dictionary that does talk about trip and drip with ch and j is the cube dictionary we have it as an um an alternative um, transcription for those words. But as far as I'm aware, our dictionary is unique in this respect. Teaching materials, I often try to steer my students away from your traditional textbooks and teaching materials, right? You know, for example, you know, I have students who who go, go to classes here, let's say in Japan, they learn English at Japan, at university, and then they come to Australia and they say, I understand nothing. I learned Spanish at university at Macquarie. You learn hola, mucho gusto, encantado de conocerte, right? Very traditional. You get to Mexico, que onda, que trampa, que morro, que pedo way, right? All of these different slangs, right? So I think I really try to steer my students away from the traditional and I say just 
do what English students or English speakers do, right? Watch movies, videos. I've had one student who spoke really good English and I said, where did you learn your English? And what, what school did you go to? He said, oh, I've never been in a class before. I said, how, how did you learn then? And he says, I play video games six hours a day with Americans. If you want to learn to ride a bicycle, would you open a textbook and read how to ride a bicycle? <laughs> or would you just use the bicycle? I think some of the materials, that, you know, they're from an age where you couldn't do this. You didn't have italki. You didn't have yeah. online. You didn't have being able to play with Definitely. video games with Americans six hours a day. Uh -huh. and, and I think for uh, in that time, having these resources these textbooks and these dictionaries was absolutely priceless but you know yeah. now you can go to the horse's mouth much more easily yeah it was really great to meet these super motivated teachers and experience firsthand their passion for english as it's really spoken so thank you to adrian alex nikki and tom thanks to italki for sponsoring this video and thanks to you for watching and don't forget to click the link below to use my code jeff5 and try italki today